Hello there guys and welcome back to another Epic Inexorable Maths video. In this video we're taking a look at a cool question, a cool concept. How many ways can you shuffle a deck of cards? And I've actually written something else here. The And you might think, well this is unrelated, but I'm going to tell you how it is related by the end of the video. There are an estimated 2.4 times 10 to the 67 atoms in the Milky Way galaxy. Okay, so that means basically... 2.4 times a 10 followed by about, you know, 67 zeros, was 66 zeros really, 2.4 times 10 to the power of 67. It's an absolutely massive number, incomprehensible. It is billions and billions and trillions and trillions of, of quadrillions uh, of, of atoms. It's absolutely a massive, really huge number, okay? So why is that relevant? We're about to see. So this is what we do. How many ways can you shuffle a deck of cards? How many ways can you order a deck of cards? That's basically what the question is, right? If you have a deck of cards, I don't have one at hand, but if I did, I would say, well, okay, you know, I've got some cards here and I want to shuffle them and I have I have 52 cards, okay? We're talking about a, a normal deck of 52 playing cards. How many different ways can I order the whole deck, okay? So we're not including uh, combinations of like, just, you know, two cards. We need all 52 cards in every combination. So how do we actually work that out? Well, it turns out it's not actually too difficult because there's a very nice formula for it, which uh, you might already know about if you maybe do A-level maths or further maths or something like that. But you, and Or if you don't do that, you might just know. But it's basically this. Let's just take it on a case-by-case -case example. If I have one object, let's say that I have a pencil. How many ways can I arrange this pencil? Well, that's a silly question. You can, it's just one, it's just one. Here's the pencil, there it is. So we can say one object, I'm gonna write it here, one object, that's one combination. Now, if I have two objects, let's say that I have a pencil and a pen, how many ways can I arrange these guys? Well, I can have this combination and I can have this combination. So this is two different combinations, which means if you have two objects, you can have two different combinations of them. Okay, that's interesting. Let's say now that we have three objects. Let's say we have a pencil, the pen, which was black, and a red pen. Now we have three objects. How many ways can we arrange these guys? Well, it turns out, you can try it if you want, there's actually six ways to arrange those three things. So for three objects, there are six ways of arranging things. Interesting. Okay, and I'll just tell you, but you can try this. If you have four objects, there are actually 24 different ways to arrange these objects. But how am I generating these numbers? I'll do another one, five. Five objects, again, it will take a long time, but you can try it if you like. You will get 120 different ways to arrange five objects all the time. It doesn't matter what the objects are. They could be books on a shelf. They could be stationary. They could be playing cards, they could be anything. But how am I generating this sequence of numbers? One, two, six, 24, 120. And what would the next one be? Well, you might be familiar already, but all of these are simply equal to their corresponding factorial number. That's one factorial, two factorial, three factorial, four factorial, five factorial. Now, we're not gonna rigorously show why this is the case. It's not too difficult to know why, but if you're not familiar with this notation, this is simply equal to each number. So three factorial, for example, is three times two times one. Two factorial is two times one. Four factorial is four times three times two times one. Five factorial is five times four times three times two times one, just like that. And they go on and on. So it's basically a factorial is every single number. So starting from your number, so five factorial, we start with five and you descend until you get to the number one. You descend in the natural numbers. So five, basically the counting numbers, five, four, three, two, one, for example. So for example, if we had six objects, you could say, well, I actually know how to do this. This is 720 because with six objects, you have six factorial different ways to order them. And of course, that's equal to six times five times four times three times two times one, etc. You get the idea. Now, where am I going with this? Well, let's cut to the chase. Let's cut towards 
52. If you have 52 different objects, let's say an entire deck of playing cards, how many ways can we arrange these guys? Well, this is equal to 52 factorial, which is an incomprehensibly large number. It's equal to just be, you know, normal pattern, 52 times 51 times 50 times all of the numbers. I won't write all of them, obviously, until we get to one, just like this. So 52, 51, 50, 49, 48, all the way down until we get to one, timesing all of them together. This number is incomprehensibly large. I'll tell you exactly what it is, or approximately what it is at least. It's roughly equal to eight, 0.07 times 10 to the power of 67, which again is basically 10 to the power of 67 is 10 times itself uh, 66 times and then times that by the 8.07. Absolutely ridiculously big number, really huge. But actually, let's keep that number in our head, 8.07 times 10 to 67 how many how many atoms do we have in the entire galaxy? Well, it's just 2.4 times 10 to the 67. Which actually means that there are more ways to shuffle a normal deck of playing cards. Totally normal, 52 cards, than there are atoms in the Milky Way galaxy. Atoms in the entire Milky Way. In, in fact, it's actually not even similar. I mean, it's, it's about three times as much. There are about three times as many ways to shuffle a normal deck of playing cards than there are atoms in the Milky Way galaxy. Of course, this number that I'm using for the Milky Way galaxy is totally an estimation. We don't actually know how many atoms are in the Milky Way, but this is an estimation. Either way, this is an insanely large number. In fact, it's so unbelievably large that if you also think about this, if you take a standard deck of playing cards and you shuffle them, you shuffle them well and you hold that deck of playing cards, you are almost 100%, you can almost be 100% sure that you are the only person in human history that has ever held that combination of playing cards, ever. Simply because there are so many combinations that it's just insanely unlikely that anyone else has held that combination. Thank you guys so much for watching. Highly appreciate it. See you in the next video.